Stats students, how you doing? Time for another Stats video. This one is over the introduction to confidence intervals, and in particular, the confidence intervals of proportions, okay? So let's start with an example that we were doing last time. That is uh, the video on hypothesis testing. And uh, here's our example, okay? We have a newspaper that cites a 30-year-old statistic claiming that 85% of adults in their 20s have at least a high school education. You think that the proportion may be higher today, so you take a random sample of 160 adults in their 20s, you find that 146 have at least a high school education. Okay, you check your conditions. Randomization, yes. Independence, yes. Big enough sample to use normal model, yes. If this, is, if this doesn't seem familiar to you, go watch the last video, okay? Then you do the, uh, the actual number crunching. You say that means P hat is normally distributed with a mean of 0.85 and a standard deviation of this. And then from our sample, the P hat that we get is 0.9125. This gives us a Z score of 2.214, which tells us that gives us a, uh, this is called a p-value, if you remember, gives us a p-value of 1.3%, and what that tells us is because there is only a 1.3% chance of getting a sample proportion that's high, according to the null hypothesis, I reject the null hypothesis, and there is significant statistical evidence that the actual proportion of adults in their 20s with at least a high school education is greater than 85%. Okay, right? So we get that. That's, that's from last video. So what we do... We, uh, <clears throat> we found out that our P hat was weird, okay? It was much higher than, uh, than, than the model predicted it would be. Therefore, we rejected the model. We rejected the null hypothesis. But what are people going to say at this point? They're going to say, okay, so it's greater than 85%. What is it? And you're going to say, oh, um, well, uh, my measurements said... 91.25%. And so you'll say, yeah, um, I think it's 91.25%. Uh, That's what it is. And they'll say, really? Exactly 91.25? And you'll say, well, um, uh, maybe like between 90 and 92.5%. Yeah, it's not exactly 91.25. That's just my estimate. But yeah, sure, between 90 and 90 92.5. And then they'll say, really? Are you sure? And you'll say, well, maybe it's more like 89 to 93.5%. Or actually, maybe it's more like from 87 to 95.5%. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's in there somewhere. Okay? All right. This is a confidence interval. All right? Because what you saw me doing was, as I went from <clears throat> small interval to big interval, I got more confident, okay? My confidence went up. My precision went down, okay? I, the more precise I am, the less confident I am, I am of that uh, 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 estimate. Matter of fact, when I didn't have an interval at all, when I just said this here, I wasn't confident at all. I'm thinking, no, it's my sample proportion, but it's not the population proportion. You, you don't get it exactly. You just get something close by, right? Now, the other thing that goes up with my confidence is this thing right here, the margin of error, all right? Matter of fact, a lot of times what you'll hear people say is instead of describing this as an interval from 87 to 95.5, they'll say, well, it's 91.25 with a margin of error of, what's that, 4.25, okay? That's exactly what a confidence interval is. So now let's look at the steps to go to uh, the steps to go through to get this confidence interval, okay? Oh, by the way, one more thing that I want to mention is the confidence level, okay? Remember alpha from last time? Well, one minus alpha is your confidence level, okay? So if alpha, if the alpha that I choose is 5%, that means I'll construct a 95% confidence interval, which means I am 95% confident that, uh, that the true proportion, the true... Uh, 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 population proportion is inside of my interval. And we'll talk about exactly what that 95% confident means in just a second. Okay? So, now let's look to the steps of building a confidence interval. I, uh, I rewrote this a little bit because what I did was I took out the prior hypothesis. That hypothesis, gone. Alright? We rejected it. It's no longer part of the picture. Now instead, what we have is a random sample of 160 adults and we find that 91.25% of them have at least a high school education. So, uh, number one, we did it, okay? You get your data, 
Number two, you determine a confidence level. Uh, let's say, I don't know, 95%. Okay, let's, let's just choose a very common one. And uh, number three, check your conditions. Okay, it's random, we already looked at that. Uh, 140, ah, this should say 160, sorry, it's a, uh, a random sample of 160. That's less than 10% of all adults in their 20s. And uh, I need to make sure that n is big enough to use the normal model, except, remember the way that we do that is we multiply n times p and n times q. We don't have a p and q. All we have is a p hat and a corresponding q hat. So that means we need to look at n times p hat, which is the number of successes, 146, and n times q hat, which is the number of failures, which in this case is 14. Okay, so and if this says 160, it should say 14. I need to talk to uh, whoever typed this <coughs> uh, and um, uh, get them to do it better. Uh, so, uh, so I have 146 successes, I have 14 failures in my particular sample. So it's a little, the, the conditions are a tiny bit different in that since we don't have uh, a P or a Q, we have to look at P hat and Q hat. And, uh, but that's easy, it's just the number of uh, successes that we got and the number of failures that we got. It's very easy to check. So those are our conditions. So now it's time to actually start crunching some numbers. So let's look at what we have here. I want, uh, I want a, uh, an interval that I'm 95% confident of that, uh, that the, the actual proportion is inside that interval, okay? And, and, but I said that weird, but I'll clarify in a second. So let's look at the, the, uh, uh, the distribution of p hat, okay? I know that p hat is between uh, p minus 1.96 times the square root of p, p q over n and p plus 1.96 times the square root of p q over n. And at this point you might be saying, what is that 1.96? Where did you get that? Well, remember, remember our, our empirical rule that says about 95% of our data is between, uh, is within two standard deviations of the mean? Well, if you want to get really precise, it's actually not 2, it's 1.96, very, very close to 2. So between uh, 1.96 standard deviations below and 1.96 standard deviations above the mean, we have just about exactly 95% uh, of our data. Okay, so, uh, so that means if I go out and take a bunch of samples over and over and over, 95% of the time, my sample proportion will end up inside of here in the white space. 5% of the time, it'll end up here in some of the blue space, okay? So in other words, 95% of the time, the difference between P and P hat will be less than this, than this 1.96 times uh, uh, the uh, square root of PQ over N. Well, if you think about it, saying that P hat will be within that distance of P is the same thing as saying that P will be within that distance of P hat. So I could, I could uh, let's say I, I take a sample and my P hat is right here, okay? Well, I could come up with an interval and say, well, I'm just gonna take this distance here and put it right there. And take this distance here, which is the same distance, and put it right there. So what I get is an interval, and sure enough, my actual proportion is inside there. And uh, then I, let's say I take another one, and this time my p hat's over here. Well, my proportion is still inside of there. And let's say I take another one. Whoa, my p hat's way over here, but it's still inside the white space, so that means my true proportion is still inside of there. And let's say I take another one, and now it's way over here on the left, and uh, uh, it's still inside the white space, so that means my true proportion is still inside of my interval. And finally, let's take one there, and oh, dang it, I missed it, all right? This time the true proportion is actually outside of my interval, and P hat is in the blue space, but you know something? That's only going to happen 5% of the time. So what that means is, if I get an interval like this, if I could do that over and over and over and over and over and over, 95% of the time, my interval would contain the true proportion, the true population proportion. Only 5% of the time would I be wrong. That's what a confidence interval means. That's what a 95% confidence interval means. It means that if I could repeat it, over and over and over, that 95% of the time I would capture that true proportion and 5% of the time I'd be wrong, all right? So, now, you may be looking at this and you may be saying, uh, problem. We don't know the real proportion, right? All we know is our p hat. 
Uh oh, we got a P there. Shoot. Okay. So, well, there's our there's the confidence interval, right? And uh, so it's we're going from P hat minus 1.96 times this uh, standard deviation to P hat plus 1.96 times the standard deviation. And uh, what I just mentioned was the standard deviation is built out of P and Q, and we don't know what P and Q are. So uh, that's the standard deviation, and we're not going to be able to calculate that. So what we have to do instead is we have to take an estimate of that called the standard error. And the estimate is exactly what you would think it is, the exact same thing, but this time we're using P hat and Q hat instead. Now, for those of y'all who say, yeah, but now you get different numbers, you really don't. You get such a slight change because P hat times Q hat is so, so very close to P times Q. Uh, the, 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 the difference that you get is so small that it basically, it's going to be part of our rounding error. Okay? So, <coughs> excuse me. So that's the standard error of uh, P hat. Uh, I also want to mention another vocabulary word here, if, uh, vocabulary word here, and that is this number here, 1.96. That's the critical value. Okay. Now, 1.96 is completely dependent upon the uh, the confidence level that we chose. We said we wanted a 95% confidence interval, and we said that 95% of our data in a normal distribution is within 1.96 standard deviations of the mean. That's where that 1.96 came from. So. Uh, so anyway, that, that just means that this is the number we're going to use whenever we're doing a 95% confidence interval. If we're doing a 90% confidence interval, it's going to be different. If we're doing a 99% confidence interval, 99%, that means our confidence goes up, our precision goes down, our margin of error goes up. It's going to be a bigger number there. Okay? So, uh, confidence intervals. What you have is uh, this thing up there. It's a... Uh, P hat minus, oh, that Z star, that's, your, that's the, the symbol we use for, uh, uh, for the critical value, okay? And like I said, it depends entirely upon the level of confidence that we have. So we have P hat minus Z star times the standard, deviation, the standard error of P hat, two P hat plus Z star times uh, the square root of P hat Q hat over N, which is the standard error of P hat. The way that we usually write that is just P hat plus or minus Z, tar, Z star times the, uh, uh, the uh, standard error, okay? And in this case, so there, there's our stand, sample proportion, there's our critical value, uh, there's our standard error, and, if the, and the critical value times the standard error gives us our margin of error, okay? So in this case, uh, since we have a 95% confidence interval, we're going to use 1.96 as our uh, critical value. And uh, now just filling in the uh, values that we got for p hat. There's p hat, there's p hat, there's q hat, there's 160, that's our n, that's our sample size. And uh, let's just evaluate that and what we get is p hat plus or minus, there's our critical value, there's the standard error of p hat. And if you multiply the critical value times the standard error, you get your margin of error, which in this case is 0.0438. And what that tells us is I am 95% confident that the true proportion of people with, uh, of, of uh, adults in their 20s with at least a high school education is between 86.9% and 95.6%. Now, you may say, wow, that's kind of a, kind of a wide error there. Uh, what can you do? Well, there's two ways that you can reduce your, uh, your margin of error. One is to uh, make your Z star, there it is, this Z star, make that smaller. And the way you make that smaller is you reduce your confidence level. Uh, I don't really like reducing my confidence level though because that means I'm going to be wrong more often and I don't like being wrong. So what can I do instead? I can make that number bigger. Okay? I can make N bigger. So what does that mean? Well, I only asked uh, 160 people. Let's go ask some more people. Okay? Just increase your N, and that's going to decrease your margin of error. Uh, now, how do you get the critical values? Well, I mentioned before that uh, the way that we got the critical value was we said uh, that, that uh, 196, 1.96, that uh, we, only, we had 95% of our data between 1.96 standard deviations above the mean and 1.96 standard deviations below the mean. 
So what you need to do is you need to find the number, the z-score, that corresponds to uh, uh, your confidence level, okay? Now, for a 90% confidence interval, what we would want is we'd want 90% of our data inside of here and 10% outside of here. And what that means is you'd want 5% there and 5% over there. So what you find is you find the number for which a standard normal random variable, uh, the probability that it's less than that is going to be 95%. And as it turns out, that's 1.645. On, you can do this with most calculators. It's some sort of inverse normal function where you put in the, uh, uh, the probability, uh, the probability that it's less than that, and it will give you the z-score, okay? So that's where that came from. If you're doing a 95% confidence interval, then what you want is you want the probability that z is less than whatever number you want to be, 0.975. Why 0.975? Well, because it's 95 plus half of that left over 5%, which would be 2.5%, 95 plus 2.5 is 97.5, okay? If you want a 99% confidence interval, okay, it's gonna be wider. That means you want the z-score that corresponds to 99% of your data being inside of here, which means only 0.5% over here and 0.5% over here, which means you'll want the z-score for which Z, the probability that Z is less than whatever that is, is 0.995, and that number happens to be 2.56, 2.576. Like I said, uh, you get it from the calculator, or you can also get it from a table of values. Uh, uh, many times, uh, the table will have, uh, 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 it'll have critical values for popular uh, um, confidence levels, okay? And by the way, these are three pretty popular confidence levels. Um, last topic I want to mention before I sign off, and that is, how do I know, like I, I said earlier, um, I should have asked more than 100, 160 people. Well, how do I know how many people to ask? How do I keep my margin of error down to a level that I want it? Well, it's, it's actually fairly easy. Let's say your margin of error, well, we don't have to say this, it's true. The margin of error is the critical value times the square root of p hat q hat over n. So let's say I want that margin of error to be less than or equal to some maximum value. Let's say I've decided it needs to be less than 2%, okay? Because in order to publish my results, I have to have a certain amount of precision, all right? Well, then what you do is a bunch of algebra, okay? You say, well, z star times the, uh, the square root of p hat q hat over n has to be less than or equal to that maximum. That's just the formula for the margin of error. Now, the problem here is, I don't know what p hat is yet. I haven't gone out and uh, gathered my data. So what you do is you be conservative, all right? And what I mean is, you say, well, what's the biggest that p hat q hat could possibly be? And the answer to that is 0.25, okay? Think about it for a second. q hat is 1 minus p hat, right? So if p hat is 0.5, then you get 0.5 times 0.5, which is 0.25. Let's say p hat's 0.6. Well, now you have 0.6 times 0.4, which is 0.24, less than 0.25. Let's say p hat's 0.7. Now you have 0.7 times 0.3, which is 0.21, also less than 0.25. As it turns out, uh, with p hat being 0.5, that's the largest it can possibly be. So this is a safe bet, okay? So we'll say 0.25 there, and uh, so that means z star times uh, the square root of 0.25 over n is less than or equal to your max. Square root of 0.25 is, of course, uh, 0.5, so that gives us this inequality there, and if you just take the reciprocal of both of those, you end up with the square root of n over 0.5 being greater than or equal to z star over, over the max, and uh, just multiply both sides by 0.5, and you get this, and now if you just take the square of both sides, you get n is greater than or equal to z star over 2, I changed the 0.5 to being over 2, I think y'all can handle that, uh, z star over 2 times the max, and that whole thing squared. Now, if you just stop me on the street and say, hey, how big does your sample size need to be for, I can't answer that. I'm not gonna remember this, I'm not gonna memorize it, and I don't encourage you to memorize it either. This is what you need to know. You need to know this substitution here to use 0.25 instead of p hat q hat, and you need to know how to do some algebra. That's what I recommend for you, okay? Don't memorize this. Just remember that you can go through the steps and, uh, and figure it out through algebra. Okay? That is all we got to go over. Uh, the next video is going to be the inference of the difference of proportions. By the way, inference, what does that mean? 
It means two things, hypothesis testing and confidence intervals. We're going to look at the difference of proportions next time. So uh, see you then. Thank you.